Hey, 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 what's going on, guys? Hey, this is going to be a real short video right here on Mike Bleed, okay? I uh, was asked a question today up on one of the forums, and the easiest way for me to tell you what it is, it's simply when somebody else's voice comes into another microphone as you're recording. So I'm going to go ahead and start this recording now. I've got all three of these tracks armed, and I'm going to tell you where they are. Uh, sure, SM57, which is a dynamic. And I've got the ATR2100, which is also a dynamic, but you can also hook it in with a USB cable straight to your computer. 26 foot away from me, I have an AT Pro 70, which is a lavalier mic. And I've got it through the house, down the hallway, back into the living room, wrapped around uh, right there at the outside door. So you might even hear a little bit of traffic come through on this. It's a condenser mic, guys, and it is very, very sensitive. So what happens when you get this mic bleed? Well, if you do not take it out, then you're going to get what's called artificial reverb. Because the sound coming into my microphone here, my SM57, is going to be slightly quicker than the microphone, the ATR2100, that's four foot away from me right now. And it just goes on and on and on. And, and there is a way to correct it, but there's some things that you have to look out for. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take the ATR2100 and I'm going to place it like somebody was sitting here going to do an interview with me or we were going to do our own recording. Now, since I brought it closer, you can see the volume come up right here on the input level. Okay, and let's just switch over to the ATR2100 right there and you can see the input level here as well. So why is this important? Well, when your input levels start getting this high, there's no way that you can sit there and remove this from your audio. Because when I try and gate out my voice on this track, it's so close to what the regular input level is that it, you just can't do it. And it, it happens all the time, guys. So, you know, what do you do? Well, if you ever watch these shows, you know, where they've got everybody sitting around the bullpen and, and they've got their microphones, uh, number one, they're probably using dynamic mics. And you'll notice they've got probably 10, 12 foot in between them. And these mics are, you know, facing them. And they have a corduroy pattern where, you know, it doesn't pick up from the back of the microphone. It's strictly picked up from the front. And they've got some sound engineer sitting back there that's running a live gate. You know, everybody's instructed on the proper mic technique, you know, what to do, what to say, just like the people. Now, the AT Pro 70 is what you would see somebody using up there in the news world. You know, somebody that has that lab mic pinned over to their, their collar or their dress. It goes in a certain position. There's a certain, you know, etiquette that, that you use when you use lab mics. And everybody knows this. They're taught how to do this. So again, you've got somebody sitting back there, you know, and you can do this with Reaper as well. And, and you know, if you watch my videos, you guys are saying, wait a minute, Mac, you know, you, you, you always say not to do this stuff pre-FX. Well, that's true, guys. But, you know, I mean, you know, give me a break. After 40 years, you know, you, you got to learn something. Okay. You know, even if it's the wrong way, I'm going to be the best at doing it the wrong way. So, uh, you know, just kind of bear with me. You know, when I sound like I'm uh, contradicting myself, I'm truly not. Because uh, we're going to hear, again, on a piece of audio, the feedback. Uh, now, if you just noticed over here on the right-hand side, that was a motorcycle that just went past. And I'm probably about 40 foot from the road. Okay? So we'll go ahead and stop this recording. And we're going to save all three of these files. Now I'm going to mute my outro. Where is my outro? There we go. And I apologize, I was playing around with this earlier. And, and guys, just so you know, if you want to move your tracks, it's just that simple, see? Because my outro always goes to the right. Now, I don't need to arm these anymore. So I'm going to take this. I don't need this window anymore. So, you know, if you guys are going, man, how'd you get your screen to look like that? Well, that's how. Reaper's real simple to manipulate any way you want to. So there's my three recordings. Okay? All of this now is the same voice. So let's go ahead and play this and just listen to what it sounds like with all three of them engaged now. OK. 
Okay? So here we have, uh, this is my uh, Shure SM57, which is a dynamic. And can you hear all that background static? Okay? Can, can you hear all the, the reverb, the, the little bit of echo? So now let's go back and let's just play the original file, uh, which is the uh, SM57, and listen to it. Okay, so here we have, uh, this is my uh, Shure SM57. Okay, now let's go ahead and add on the other dynamic that was in the room. Let's listen to that. Okay, so here, we have, uh, this is my, uh, now if you remember, I picked it up and moved it over closer like we were having the interview, so let's go ahead and listen to it here. Take the ATR 2100, and I'm going to place it like somebody was sitting. Hey, Rebecca, that's what that noise was, and I apologize because it sounds just like wind coming through on a windy day or an oscillating fan to where it comes through, and that's another thing, guys. You know, don't be putting air into your microphone. If you're outside, use what they call a dead kitten. I did not name it. Okay? All it is, it's that great big fuzzy thing you see people put on their mics, you know, on the TV shows and things. Got me in trouble one time uh, using that term, but it is what it is. So listen to me just barely handling that mic. This is why having a mic stand or a boom arm is so important. And, and that's another thing, guys. When you see these broadcasters or these reporters out on location, you'll always see those people trying to grab their mics, and you notice they don't give it to them. Because if you do, that's the noise you're going to hear. Take the ATR 2100, and I'm going to place it like somebody was sitting here going to do an interview with me, or we were going to do our own recording. Now, since I brought it closer, you Okay, now right there is where I now have that mic, and I've got my arm steadied acting like a boom stand, okay? So now let's go ahead and add in our third mic, okay? The good old ATR, or I'm sorry, AT uh, Pro 70. And guys, I love these little dynamic mics. I use them all the time. But you gotta have it in your right environment, okay? So let's listen to all three of them again. Now, since I brought it closer, you can see the volume come up right here. Do you hear how thin that makes my voice sound? So let's just go ahead and solo that one, and let's see what it picked up from my voice in two rooms away, 26 foot. Now, since I brought it closer, you can see the volume come up right here on the input level. Okay, let's just switch over to the ATR 2100 right there. All right, guys, and that's Mike Lee. All right, take care, God bless. Be safe, and we are out of here.